Good morning, y'all, and happy Thursday. Um, hopefully you guys are staying warm on this chilly day. Oh my, a chilly week. Oh my gosh, the snow is crazy for Houston, right? Okay, well today we are so excited. We are going to make for you guys um, chicken pot pie. It's something that is a favorite here, especially when it's cold, and that is something that's needed if you're in the Houston area, or even Texas or all the southern states. Hello, Lee, good morning. Um, so, all right, well, we're gonna go ahead and get started, but surprise, because of the cold weather, we have a guest this morning, so, you gonna come on? Ta-da! Good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Many of you I know, my name is Dr. Kala Hewlett, founder of the Back Pain and Sciatica Center of Texas. This is my lovely wife, Tara, uh, who you've been watching for the past couple months, as she's been sharing some of the low inflammation recipes that we've utilized here in our house. Um, Tara, you want to go back and how we even started on this journey? It really, it's been several years that we've been eating healthy, just part of who we are and what we do. But I'd say it was almost a year ago that we really started getting serious. Yeah, like um, Kala just said. So we have always eaten healthy, just being more holistic. It's just who we are and what we, our lifestyle has always been. But about a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, we kind of got intrigued with the low inflammation diet. And so we started implementing that more and more and it, as a lifestyle. So we've cut out, um, let's see, dairy, sugar, and any glutens. So we stick to, instead of a flour, like a whole wheat flour or a white flour, we do like an almond flour. So these things do not spike your insulin and they help you to heal faster. That's probably more of your category to talk about, the yep. healing process, because I always tell you guys, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a cook, um, I'm a mom who feeds her family. <laughs> like so many people that I've talked to when COVID hit, we got what we call the COVID-10, which means we were baking and cooking and all sorts of good things. I'd come home and the counter would be full of cookies, brownies, and all these other delicious things. So of course, if they're on the counter and I walk by, I would eat them. <laughs> and so about 10, 15 pounds later, I was like, Tara, hey, we really, this is getting out of control. We need to do something. So we have what's called a trust your gut program. Now we typically utilize this for patients that have hormonal imbalances, um, inflammatory conditions, and it's about a 90 day program that really cleans up the diet. Um, for those that have inflammation, think of inflammation like a fire, right? If there's a fire, the first step you have to do is put out the fire. You have to extinguish it. After that, you have to seal. So if there's any uh, damage in the area, you wanna seal it off. So no fire, no additional flames, um, get to that area. And the last one is you want to rebuild it or heal it. And so this program called Trust Your Gut is all about healing the gut by putting out the inflammation, extinguishing it, sealing the gut, and then rebuilding the gut over a 90-day period. And so like all great things, I was like, Tara, we're doing the Trust Your Gut program. She's like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And uh, But she was totally on board. And so after 90 days of being really, really committed to it. And by the way, during this 90-day period, we traveled out of town. I went on a um, week-long canoe trip with my son to the Ozarks uh, on a river canoe trip and still was able to maintain a good low inflammation diet. So if you guys ever have any questions about how do I travel and eat, I'm going camping or other modifications, please just reach out to us, let us know. We, we've been there, we've done it, and we learn how to make it work no matter where we're at. So anyways, that's a little bit about how and why we started doing these low inflammation recipes. Also, for those of us that are patients in our clinic, some of the newer patients may recognize Dr. Gabby or Lonnie more than myself, um, but no matter who of us you see, all of our patients we put on a low inflammation diet when they come. The reason we do that is we know that inflammation contributes to the pain cycle. So if someone has, whether it's joint pain, knee, shoulder, hip, back pain, neuropathy, or any other type of pain symptom condition, we know inflammation contributes and just makes those things worse. So we put our patients on a low inflammation diet. So as we're working on healing them, unpinching nerves, uh, repairing joints, cartilage, uh, repairing damaged nerves, if it's neuropathy, all that, what you eat is gonna have a significant impact in that healing process. So that's another reason that we wanted to start giving you great recipes and ideas. So Tara, let's get all cooking right. for today. Yes, and if you have questions, you guys can ask the questions as we're going. All yep. right, so we're gonna start oh, with our bacon. So we don't do pork in the house, so we switched um, when we started this. So we started, like I said, about a year ago being intrigued with it and slowly doing it, but then full 10 months dive into it. So 
here we go. So we have our turkey bacon, and um, this Applegate's a pretty good clean one. It's got no antibiotics or anything. So, like I said, um, always just slowly, like wherever you are is great, and as you get better. All right, you want to turn and Terry, where'd, you, where'd you get this one? Where do we buy this? Oh, we turn on that pan, please. No. Okay, so um, just at your local, your grocery store, H-E-B, Kroger's, if you're local. Um, I don't know if Walmart sells this. They all have some turkey bacon, so the cleaner the version, the better. Okay. And it's good. I see Jamie on there. Tell Clint it tastes good. Make it for him. He might not even tell the difference. You know, my kids have actually come to prefer this better, so that's good. I think because sometimes the bacon has, like, uh, pork bacon, traditional bacon, has too much fat, and they don't like that. But, uh, here we go. So, oh, actually, I'm just going to cut it up. Uh, do you want to do that? Sure. Right, how, small, how small a piece? Um, oh, you're, sorry. You're, you're juice. Um, here, let me let me show them real quick. And then I'll wash my hands. Uh, yeah. Okay, you got that? Okay, so I'm just gonna slight cut it in like dices like this big. I don't know, is that like a half an inch? Sure. Okay, throw that in there. All right, let me rinse my hands as I touch that. Okay. So while he's getting that going, we're gonna do some garlic. And if you've watched before, you know I'm not a huge fan of a mincer. I like to kinda like slice mine up and dice it myself. But if you love a mincer, and that is, that's so much, I don't know why, but that is faster and better. So if that's what you do, do it that way. So are you guys staying nice and warm? Hopefully everybody has their power and water back on. What a adventurous, let's go with adventurous, right, week? Who is this? Hello, Drew, how are you? You guys comment below too, like what was the funnest thing you did this week? Like for example, Monday when it started, the, you know, the big snow day, um, there's a hill just down the road from our house. So we took the pool inflatable tubes and uh, we took the kids down there, and yes, I know for those of you that are from Colorado, it's really not a big mountain, but for us native Texans, <laughs> it, was it, huge. it was huge. <laughs> and so we went sledding uh, just down the street in the neighborhood, and that was super fun. Um, snowball fights, the kids invited all their friends in the neighborhood over and had snowball so, fights for a couple days. What's funny is those tubes, the kids, I think Paula took uh, Gigi, our youngest, down at first, and then the kids came with their friends, and then all of a sudden they were all down there, and then they popped all the tubes going down there. I mean, they, they got the big fat, like, avocado one, and then that popped, like, everything was popping, but they had, they had fun. So that's what yeah. happened, So right? comment below, tell us what fun adventures you did this week with Snow Week. Okay. Let's get this garlic. Alright, so just garlic like this. You hangman and other cool games at the house. Oh good, I'm glad. That is so fun. Good memories, right? My kids have literally, I mean, they built like a little outdoor igloo. I was pretty impressed with that for their snowball fight. It was really cute. Okay, so we're gonna throw our garlic. That was um three cloves of good medium size gar uh, cloves. So if you have little bitty ones, you know how they're different sizes, then do like five. Okay. And now we're gonna have our onion. This is a little bit bigger. I told you guys if I have a big onion, it's because my kids pick it out. They love to get the biggest onion possible at the grocery store. They think it's so funny. And sometimes I'm like, that's, that's too much onion. So just, a, a normal medium size onion, not teeny tiny, not extra. extra All right, see someone else playing charades, hangman, other cool games inside the house. Yes, games inside the house where it's warm. Oh my goodness, so my kids love, that's the game we play, charades. Charades, I don't know somehow. So growing up, I remember playing charades with my family. I don't, maybe we played it a lot, but I do remember playing it. We have these little cardboard pieces that we have like oh, a yeah? picture on. Huh. Um, so when the kids were younger, it was like an easy game where, but we never had, Things they would draw, it would just be themed like, hey, charades, but today is going to be Disney themed. Or it's going to be, 
um, some other type of theme. And it kind of is the theme of whatever they're into. Yeah. So for a while, it was Star Wars, like non-stop. Yeah. But if, if we're sitting around, it's like, hey, guys, let's have a game tonight. One of the kids would be like, let's do charades. Um, so that, that's kind of our thing. Bonnie, oh, my goodness. Are you guys still without power or are you guys <gasps> back on? Oh, no. Lots of blankets, candles, card games. Right? Good. Hopefully you guys get power back on. I know most of Montgomery County's back on, but there's still some pockets without power. Okay, so we're just going to dice up this onion. And we'll add that to the pan with the um, garlic and the turkey bacon. And what temperature do you want this on? Uh, medium. Uh, medium high. I kind of like to cook everything a little bit higher because I'm impatient. And in my mind... It goes, it's kind of like, okay, so I don't know if you guys do this. You, you could be on Team Paula here. When we get in the car, I crank up the heat. Like if it's freezing, I'm like, oh, we need it at like the highest temperature. And Paula's like, it's not going to cool it down any faster. I kind of cook the same way where I'm like, let's cook it yeah. up a little bit. It's like if we're at a hotel, you know, she'll <laughs> hit the button four times, even though it's already lit up. I'm like, sweetie, it's already lit, but it's all good. We all, we all do those unique, silly things that... So, I cook it more medium high than just medium, but medium is what you would want. Hello, Peggy. How are you today? Staying warm, having a great day. It's a, it's a better day out, right? It's a little muggy, but, or overcast. Okay, so we're going to get those cooking. And so we're just going to cook it until the onions are, you want them like that, was it translucent? So kind of like clearish and not so white. So let's give that a minute. And I love chicken pot pie when it's cold outside. It's warming, it's fulfilling. Um, one of the challenges that we had in trying to figure out a great recipe was how do we make the bread? Because I love the bread and the crust. Uh, and so Tara was able to get that figured out a while back. So I absolutely love it. Um, it's still low inflammation, it's good, fulfilling and so forth. All right, so uh, that's started. Let's go ahead and um, do you want to start cutting these? So we're just going to do carrots. now. If you have a whole carrot, that's great. I just always happen to have these little mini carrots in the fridge and I always buy the organic just so the kids can snack on them and eat them. So go ahead and take these out. And you're gonna need, um, if you have, I would do two full carrots, like big carrots, and if not, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, Bonnie said it's still snowing. That's in San Antonio? Oh my god. Oh, is that where you're at right now? That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, Between the snow and the ice, we realize we definitely love the snow a lot better. It's a lot funner to play in. Ice is not very fun to play in or drive in. Let's say like 10 to 12 of these little mini ones. Okay. okay. Give me kind of so, small. Um, let's, let me, I got to angle so then you guys can see here. So we're just going to slice them first and then kind of dice them, but not two, because you don't want a huge carrot bite in your mouth. Um, at least I don't. So, you know, something like, let me pick up the board. It's easier for you guys to see without the carrots falling. Something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know. What, what, what size is that called? If you could see here. Let me just put them in the hand there. there just little sizes like that. All right. All right. So. And I'll try to do this without cutting my finger off. Oh, my gosh. Now, I, this is chicken pot pie, but I don't see any chicken out, sweetie. It, it, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I just want to make sure. Okay, so here we are. This is what your pan's gonna look like inside with your bacon and your garlic and your onions. So now we can throw in the rest of it. So here's our chicken. And I just, this is just from our H-E-B. You can get um, whatever grocery store. I try to get um, anything organic and natural as possible. And so that's what this is. And so this is, let's see, like uh, two pounds. Two pounds of chicken. So I'm going to cut it and dice it in there just with my scissors. Not so, I'm not going to use a knife for that. Okay, so if you guys have any questions like about the low inflammation diet, today's the up. day to ask. Since Irene, thanks for joining us there. Welcome, welcome. Okay, and I'm going to cut these about like an inch. Thick. Okay, as you're cutting that, I'm gonna show you guys this. Check this out. These are oh my gosh. chocolate chip banana bread muffins. Chocolate chip banana bread muffins. 
we went as those of you in the clinic know we usually have fresh fruit there and so when the roads cleared up uh, Tuesday we drove up to the clinic and we had a handful of bananas there and we didn't want them to go bad so we brought them home and made banana nut bread with chocolate chips now not normal and this is gluten-free right sweetie uh, yes, it's the same thing, gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. Now, remember, I say dairy-free. I do allow butter because I love butter. It, at the beginning of the 90 days, we didn't do butter um, and eliminated it, and then you slowly see how your body can handle things, and butter, we didn't react, so we kept butter. So when I say dairy-free, I mean everything but butter because yeah. butter but is pretty good. Awesome. And then which chocolate chips did you use? Were these the Lacanta or something else? Uh, those chocolate chips, I think, are... Oh, you know what? Those are Baked Believe. So, Baked Believe is our favorite that you get at Walmart. You can only buy them at Walmart. I haven't seen them anywhere else. But Lily's is good, too. Yeah. But So, it's chocolate, but it's sugar-free, so it's natural, right? Uh-huh, yep. Natural, yep. naturally sweetened, but it tastes pretty good. So, we made muffins, we made a loaf, and we've munched on it over the last day. So, have you done this on a show yet? No. Nope. All right. In a week ahead, we'll do this... Uh, Chocolate chip, banana nut bread. Oh, this is uh, starting to smell so good. Oh my gosh. All right, are those carrots almost ready? Yeah? They, some of them are ready. Oh, my hands don't quite cut as fast as yours. But we're getting there, we're getting there. All right, welcome Mary Ann. Welcome Dr. Caldwell. Good to see everybody hopping in again. Hope everybody's staying safe and warm and okay. power's back on today for everyone. Let me get this to stir. And so, and I mentioned we started doing this. I say we. Right, I'm going to switch over. But really, Tara started doing this uh, at the end of last year just so we could teach our patients some healthy recipes, how to cook them at home, how to prepare them. So, so she does this every, this is your first time joining us. Every Thursday at 9 o'clock. Yeah, we were a little late this morning getting on, but 9, yes. Every Thursday, 9 o'clock, Tara's on here live from our home. This is our real kitchen. This is not a studio. <laughs> like, this is for real. Um, but uh, sharing something and all the recipes that we utilize, they're what I call the pass the kid test. So we were going to do something different, but Tara's like, I haven't made it yet. I don't know if it's good. I can't do something if it's not good. <laughs> so just know that everything that you see on here has passed the kid test, meaning we have four kids, teenagers and below, and everything that we make, they enjoy and they eat as well. If they don't enjoy it and they don't think it's good, we're not going to share it with you guys. So. Kid test, kid approved, as they say. It's so true. So yeah, a lot of these we started because I, we both love food. I mean, who doesn't, right? But I can't just eat like a salad every day and be like, oh, well, that's it. So I need real food and I need it to taste like real food. So. Before you go further, the butter too. Did you mention that? not there yet though, but yeah. Oh, because right. you mentioned the butter with the. Uh, yes. With the banana. Yeah. So this is the butter we utilize. You zoom in there. It's. Kerrygold. Kerrygold pure Irish butter, right, which is milk from Irish grass-fed cows. Can you get this at HEB in most grocery stores? But this is oh, a, yeah, everyone carries this it. is a healthier butter. And it's so good. So we started, we switched over to that. I actually had a friend who's a chef, April. Um, yep, shout out to Chef April, if any of you know her in the area. She's amazing. So she came and really helped us, um, oh gosh, like in January last year. And... Um, was teaching us some things and she told me to switch yeah that to that butter um because it was a better alternative and let me tell you my kids love it and gobble like they will lather their toast with that okay so here's our carrots all chopped up and we're just going to toss that in there can you put the chicken in there yes that's what i was cutting over there oh, <laughs> I see that. oh my goodness yes yes it's in it's hearty, right? So I like the bacon. I like the uh, chicken. Lee, I like her new co-star as well, Lee. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lee, I, I hope you and your mom are doing well and staying warm, buddy. Please tell her I said hello. You're going to make him have a bigger head, Lee. Goodness gracious. Okay, so here we go. We've got our... Can you uh, get the top on or no? Nope, not yet. Okay, so now we're going to add... Um, you want to get a pillar? I forgot to get a pillar out. Yep. Um, turnips. Turnips are next. So, because we're low inflammation, I'm glad you're good, Lee. Um, we do not um, do potatoes, white potatoes. So, yep. So, we're going to do turnips instead. I discovered through this that turnips are going to have the same, um, like, 
what do you say, like consistency? Yeah, consistency and um, density. Uh, yeah, as a potato would, and so that is what's great. You can hear the kids starting to walk inside from the snow. They're, they have been like loving, uh, loving it, I guess. Um, all right. Um, I'll go. You wanna grab another one? Yeah. I peel too slow. <laughs> All right, so you just cut off the top and bottom, and then we're just going to peel that. And I'm going to do four of these turnips. And this one? And they're, uh, that's a different one. Um, we got an all black candle one, too. So this one I have, it always makes me, I think I told you guys once, we got when we were in Hawaii. So Paula's family is from, or his dad's from Hawaii, and we went a couple years back to go visit. And somehow we stumbled upon this little market and they were selling these and they're actually really good. Don't know where it's at. Oh, okay. Here, finish peeling that. She's gonna find it right away. So I'm more of a helper. <laughs> um, oh, you found it, how'd you find it? Cause it was right there. Oh, there's a snake would have bit me, right? Oh my goodness. That's, that's why he's the assistant. All right, so just go ahead and peel. You have the Yeah, so what are some of the things you're doing with turnips as you start talking? Um, okay, so turnips. So, you can peel that. You can cut. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to, same thing, dice these up just like you would with a potato into little cubes, you know, like, um, you know, you don't, I just don't, I definitely want something that's going to be bite sized, not huge. That, that's all you're getting. So, uh, half an inch or less. I'll show you. So I slice it and then I'm dicing them. Alright, is that good? Oh, we got one more. Okay. okay, so something like this size is what you're gonna go with. Okay, so the turnip. So what have we used? Um we done mashed potatoes? We have done mashed potatoes. So for our potatoes we either do cauliflower or turnip. Oh last night we had steak with cauliflower rice. No cauliflower oh, mashed potatoes it was totally good with Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. Yes, sauteed mushrooms. I love mushrooms. So, um, and we've done a couple weeks back. Um, I wanted a uh, baked potato soup, so we did this instead because I love potato baked potato soup. That, that was really good. I remember that. So, here we go. Yeah. So we just got into turnip corn. It seems like in the last four months. Yep. I actually um, over the fall is when I was um, wanting to make chicken noodles, uh, chicken, what is this? Chicken pot chicken pie, pot. my mind went blank. And, um, and I was like, oh, but we don't have, and so I was, gotta love Google, right? They have all the answers. Um, and somehow stumbled upon turnips, and I was like, well, let's give that a shot. And I'm always like, okay, I always tell the kids and call them, like, how'd that taste? What do you think? Did you, what do you think that was? And then they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, it was a turnip. And they're like, oh, well, that was pretty good. Call always laughs because I always tell people, what do you think? How did it taste? Did it taste normal? Did it taste real? He's like, don't even ask I'm like, them. you got to <laughs> stop telling people ahead of time. You tell them afterward. You just feed them. And they're like, it's like, oh, that's good. And I tell her, hey, don't tell the kids either. The way, the real test is if our kids, again, we have teenagers. If the kids go back for seconds, it was good. Right. And remember, I told y'all last week with the lasagna, they went back for like thirds and fourths. They like because we've trained the kids. Look, mom, back. mom works really hard on making dinner, so whatever it is, you, <laughs> you say thank it. you. It tastes great, <laughs> right? So we can't always go by what they say because they always say thank you. It tastes great, mom. So just wait until they go back for seconds, and if they eat it for leftovers for lunch, that's the real test. Okay, just also, um, for those okay. y'all that are currently patients, Carol, hey, welcome. Oh, for on, those on. of you, oh, pause for gonna... a sec. All right, here are our turnips all diced up. So we're gonna throw those into the pot and get those thrown in again. Perfect. So hey, it's Thursday, right, of snow week. We'll be back Monday, normal hours. Um, I know the roadways are a little bit clear today, but we decided just out of an abundance of caution and safety, we don't want anybody to be on the roadways. Some of our staff didn't have power for an extended period of time, but again, we shut down the clinic for this week. We will be back Monday, ready to rock and roll with normal hours. Um, we are checking messages as well, so if you want, you can call the clinic. It's gonna go to our answering service, but leave a message, and Amy is checking messages periodically throughout every day. And uh, in fact, they're gonna be in the office tomorrow afternoon making some phone calls as well. So just wanna give you an update there. All right, what are you okay. doing now? Now we're gonna do some mushrooms. So, let me turn that water off so you can hear me. Okay, so for mushrooms, the correct way to clean a mushroom 
is, and I don't know how or why, but is to take your mushroom and you wipe it with a wet towel. But I'm kind of impatient for that, so I just rinse them under the sink. I, they say something that affects the cooking if you do that. Like I said, I'm a mom, not a chef, so it works, right? Okay, so to, um, like I said earlier when Paula said we had mushrooms for dinner last night, I love mushrooms. So we're just gonna cut, you don't need to cut the whole stem, just the very tip of it, because it kind of gets like hard and dry there. And then we're just gonna slice those mushrooms up. She's so much faster better than I am at this. Um, I think that goes back to you just, you know, what you do every day. Uh, and you know what they're thinking, right? They're thinking, okay, this all sounds good, but how are we gonna make a gluten-free crust or bread substance? Because to me, that's the favorite part of chicken pot pie. Otherwise, it's just like a stew or soup, which is good, but the chicken pot pie, it's the crust that makes it so good. All right, well, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. After the commercial break, right? <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna Get these diced up. Um, you know, just you want to show them. Call it. Grab a handful. Finish. There's a few things. Yeah, so just a little smaller. So I don't know. Happy oh my days. goodness, Carol! Do you not have water still? <gasps> oh my ah. no. Well, I hope you guys get water turned back on soon. Daniel, welcome. Thanks for joining us as well. All right. Those of you just joining us, I'm Dr. Kala Hewlett from the Back Pain and Sciatica Center of Texas. This is my wife, Tara, and every Thursday at 9 a.m., we, I, we, I'm usually at the clinic working, Tara comes and does a low inflammation recipe of the week. We've been doing this for the past several months. Um, we started just doing it for our patients because we wanted to teach them how to eat healthier to help with their overall health and wellness. Also, those that are in pain, a low inflammation, low inflammation diet helps the healing process to accelerate, and so we always say you are what you eat, so we want to eat healthy foods. Okay, so now we're just gonna throw in our chicken stock. So this is where <laughs> we have two different kinds. I'm gonna tell you, my favorite one is not the organic one. It's actually this one, it's a little bit thicker. So it is my favorite. But I do have the organic, I kind of buy a mix of them. So here's your, and you want the chicken stock because it's better than the chicken broth, it's thicker. So we're gonna throw in a container of this. We gotta, we're gonna put that in there and get those turnips and mushrooms all soft and tender. Here, we're actually gonna put both in because we have to make everything in big because we are a family of six and it's and, not just and like I, I a I love leftovers. He does. I'm a leftover person. Um, like I would prefer for lunch tomorrow, I'm totally cool for a good dinner. I just as soon have it two times in a row. So. I prefer leftovers, so I can have it for lunch the next day. I am not a leftovers fan at all, that much. 